Hi, my name is Christiana Gaudet, and I'm here with a review of the brand new Japaridza Tarot by Nino Japaridza and US Games. I believe that this is one of the most exciting, interesting, and important tarot decks published this year. Let's see the why. The first thing you'll notice is the box is really special. We see the artwork on the box, and when you look, you might think you're looking at the Fool, but you're not. You're really looking at the Two of Fire, or the Two of Wands. One of the features I like, I don't know if you can see this well, there you go. Do you see how the cutout from the card image is glossy against a matte background? It's little details like this that make this a really special project. Now, let's see what we've got. Here's the book, and you can see this is not your average little white book. This is 175 pages of real tarot beauty. You can see that each card image is reproduced in color in this book. You don't see that in too many tarot books. Now, the author is Steve Lucas. He's an art dealer, and he worked with the artist from the beginning of this project. I have to tell you, I really like his writing style. And even though neither the artist nor the author had a lot of tarot knowledge going into this project, they really do show that they know their stuff. Now, the image on the cover of the book, this is actually the Queen of Tides or the Queen of Cups. I, I really like the, the shell at her belt. So we have a, a great Great book here. That's uh, Four of Fire, Four of Wands. Really interesting images all the way through, as you can see. Now, let's take a look at the deck itself. And you can see, you know, again, the box is, is really special. And I want to remind people, you know, this is, uh, we're in the onslaught of the holiday season. This deck would make a great gift for anyone who appreciates art. Even if they're not into tarot, this is the kind of thing that could sit on the coffee table. This could be a great icebreaker at a fun cocktail party. So do consider this as a, a really unique and inexpensive gift. Now, let's take a look at the cards. The cards, as you can see, are a little oversized, bigger than the, the average tarot deck. I, I really like the card backs sort of a Celtic design, and you can see the way they're colored. There's a lot of depth and texture to the color. You'll find that kind of depth and texture throughout this deck. Now, let's take a look. We have one card that, that gives us a, a guide to some of the changes that are unique to this deck. You can see that the four elements are used in this deck, but the names of the minor arcana suits have been changed. The traditional suit of swords related to the element of air is now the suit of winds. The traditional suit of wands, the element of fire, is the suit of fire. Cups, element of water, is tides. Pentacles, coins, or discs, element of earth, is gardens. Now, there's some differences in the, the court pages cards as well. in this deck are jesters, the knights are strangers, the queens are queens, and the kings are kings. Now, I love the idea of knight as stranger, because you think about it, the knights are travelers, and travelers, by their very nature, are going to end up being strangers quite often. I really like that. Pages as jesters, I understand what they're going for here. They are trying to bring out the playful aspect of the pages, and, and that's fine. I'm not as fond of it, though. Okay, so let's take a look, first of all, at the major arcana. 
And, you know, you will see that this is not your typical tarot deck. It, it really is a, a whole different take on tarot. But I would say it is quite respectful of the archetypes in many ways. Let's take a look. Here's the Fool, the Magician. I, I just really love the, the colors and the images here. The Priestess. the Empress. Now here, Major Arcana IV, the Emperor, has been renamed War, and the coloring, as you can see, is very different. One of the things I, I would really have to say about this deck is it very much is tarot through the lens of of the artist and the artist has a very specific cultural experience and for her the masculine authoritarian nature of the emperor translates into war now i would agree that that is an aspect of the emperor you see it even in the weight image of the emperor where you see that his feet are clad in armor. The emperor has the power to declare war. That this is the primary energy of the emperor in this deck, I'm not sure how much I like that, and I'm not sure how much it's going to work for me, but it's a legitimate, it, it's a legitimate way of going about it. So let's go forward. Uh, we see that Major Arcana 6 is love rather than the lovers. I like the chariot. Justice is card 8. Strength is card 11. The Hermit's very appealing. Uh, card 10, Fortune rather than Wheel of Fortune. Strength, of course, card 11. I, I like this particular card very much. Okay, and here's another interesting change. Major Arcana 12, the Hanged Man, in this deck is called the Drowned. Now, it's, it says in the book that it's called the Drowned because it refers to the subconscious nature of this card. And, you know, if you're having a hard time resonating with this, do try to remember that the Hanged Man is related to Neptune and the element of water. So there really is a, a traditional reason to think that this could work. I like the image very much as well. I think temperance, the people on the swings, I, I like that. I don't know that it really expresses the energy of alchemy that we see in temperance, but, but maybe it does. You can really see the surrealistic influences in this deck. And, you know, this is not the first surrealistic artist to create a tarot deck. Of course, the Dali Universal Tarot is one of the world's most famous tarot decks. I don't know. How do you feel about the moon, this image with an eyeball? I don't know. Do you love it? Do you hate it? So there's the Major Arcana. And we'll just take a, a quick look. One thing, after looking at that major arcana, one thing that's very surprising is that in the minor arcana, some, not all, but some of the cards do reflect the weight traditions a little bit. Here's an example, the Three of Winds, which of course would be the Three of Swords. We can see that it is a little reminiscent of the weight Three of Swords. Four of Swords actually almost looks more like the weight Four of Cups in a way. Six of Swords, of course, in the weight deck would be the, uh, the people in the boat. Here we see someone flying. It kind of carries the same energy, I think. Seven of Swords, the, the Thieves card, is, is fairly similar to, to what we're traditionally used to seeing. And so you'll see that some of the images are, are very clearly and easily identifiable as the cards they are. 
others not as much. Here's the Queen of Winds or the Queen of Swords. Now here's the, the Two of Fire that I was telling you about earlier. And here's the Three of Fire, a hot air balloon. I really like that. Four of Fire. So you can see, uh, one thing I could see people might complain about this deck is the images are not necessarily consistent. Uh, there are different art styles. There's actually different media used in the different cards. Uh, that's not going to make it appealing to everyone. Doesn't bother me though. I, I really like this deck. Now, there are a lot of tarot decks that are called art decks. And often I kind of joke and I say that, yeah, art deck, it means that it's a completely unreadable deck. It's going to sit on your shelf and no one's ever going to play with it. But I think you'll agree that this deck, though certainly a collectible deck, certainly an art deck, I think this is a very readable deck. It's very different. It's, it's different from the Crowley tradition. It's different from the Waite tradition. Certainly different from the Marseille tradition. But I think if you're comfortable with any of those traditions and you want to move into this deck, I think you easily could. And I think if you're just starting out Studying this deck will not necessarily give you a good foundation of the traditional tarot images, but I think you could certainly learn to read with this deck, especially if you found these images evocative, as I certainly did. The Five of Gardens here. Of course, the Five of Pentacles or the Five of Discs or Coins and other decks. You can really get a sense of the, uh, uh, the poverty, the homelessness, the being out in the cold. You can, you can really feel it in this card. When I say these images are evocative, that's exactly what I mean. They, they evoke the, the feelings of the archetypes, of the cards. probably not a reading deck for everyone. It is a highly collectible deck. I think it's a deck we'll be talking about for a very long time. I think intuitive time. readers will find this an especially workable deck. I think tarot students will learn a lot from working with this deck. I think there are some people for whom this will be their tarot deck, their pathway into tarot understanding, and their go-to tool for divination, meditation, and magic. From US Games, Nina Japaritza, Steve Lucas, Japaritza Tarot.